So now that we know what a mean is and how to find it, let's talk about the formula used to find it and the symbols that make up that formula. In statistics, when you're studying data, you're always interested in where that, there, that data came from a sample or it came from a population. Now when it comes to mean, finding the um, value is going to be the same for this whether it's a sample or a population, but in every other situation it does matter, so it's still distinguished here. So the first thing that we want to look at is called a sample mean, and we use this symbol right here, which is called X bar, because it has a bar on top, I know you're shocked. And this is when you use sample size N, which I'll talk about more in a minute. In the case that you are finding a mean and it's from a population, we use the Greek lowercase letter m, which is pronounced mu, kind of like you're saying the word music, but you just stop at the beginning, mu. And this is for a population mean. Again, the sample size is going to be important, but we'll talk about that in one second. So in terms of the formula, those are the two symbols for means, but how does the formula work? It uses the Greek uppercase letter for S, which is referred to as sigma. And sigma is a direction that's telling you to add. So whenever you see that sigma, it's just like the addition operator that you always see in math. And the other thing that we need to look at, the last piece of the formula I was mentioning was the sample size. And so a lowercase n for a sample, sorry, an uppercase n for a population, but it's just the number or, you know, count of items that are in your list. So when it comes to the formula, you know, whether you're finding a sample mean or a population mean, you'll notice the formulas essentially look the same. They both tell you to add and the thing that they're asking you to add is x. Now I don't have x listed alone, I'm sorry, above, because x here is just a single data item. x is a single data item. So we're going to add every single data item that's in our list, and then you know we're going to be dividing by n, which was the count. So we already did that process on the other page. You know how to get that done. But let's go ahead and look at problem 6a. So for 6a, I'm asked to compute or to calculate the population mean. And two of my numbers are missing, because I didn't want you to work ahead, because you know that would be such a horrible thing. <laughs> so anyways, the two missing numbers, that was sarcasm, are 39 and 42. So because I'm told to find a population mean, I'm using the formula mu equals sigma x over n. I'm sorry, capital N, doesn't look like a capital N. And for this case, what I would do is start by you know, finding sigma x. And so for me, that would be to be adding up all of the numbers. So I would take 38 plus 42 plus 47 and keep doing that all the way through the list and I would come up with a total of, that's a three, I would come up with a total of 329. So the next thing that I need to do is divide that that I have, my 329, by the count. So I'm going to come over here and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, seven, eight numbers. So I'm dividing by 8 because there were 8 numbers in the list. And when I do that calculation, I got 41.125. It's very common to get decimal values for a mean, even though your data might not have had decimal values. I'm assuming a lot of you have a GPA that's not a 3.0, it's a 3.162, whatever it may be, and you know you can't earn 0.162 in a class, but that's how it calculated out. So in this particular case, um, there's no directions as to how many places to go after the decimal. If there's no directions, I'm gonna go ahead and go one place, 
And because I'm stopping at one place, I had to decide how it rounded. Since it's a two after my decimal value that I'm going to stop at, I'm not going to round it up. So I'm going to write 41.1 as the average of those numbers. So now I'd like you to go ahead and find the mean for problem 6b. And your missing number is 115. So why don't you go ahead and calculate it, maybe hit pause, calculate it, and then come back and check your answer. Okay, did you get 123? Hopefully you did. If not, we can go over the steps to this one in class.